Okay, now we are starting today. Meanwhile, everyone will be joining and uh, so time permits us now. So today uh, we'll be discussing about the face yoga. Basically, the two aspect, I mean, you know, when we, uh, you know, when we actually look for the face well-being, you know, or wellness of your face or our face, we have to definitely explore in, in, in both the side. The medical perspective, I mean, you know, where we basically try to understand the structure, system, how it is actually works on the cellular basis. And the second is the yogic perspective, which is more holistic. So if you look at the yogic perspective, it is more on how we, basically how you're going to, you know, heal, how you're going to improve the health of your face, face, skin, muscles, bones, everything comes under that. Like So, and also it is said that basically uh, your face reflects your health. Okay. So today's topic that we're going to cover in this uh, practice, which is like, we'll be understanding the overview of the face yoga, then we'll understand some of the problems that basically we should be looking into the face yoga part, which I mean, face yoga covers. Then there are a few problems that in detail, like dryness, you know, uh, face fat, wrinkles, pigmentation, dark circle, acne, pimples. I mean, these are the major, uh, you know, basically major problems we actually see on the face. And how yoga can actually help you to uh, overcome those things. Then we'll definitely talking about so there we are definitely uh, we are talking about the problem. The other side we are talking about the solution. I mean daily routines that should be maintaining asanas and pranayam. What are the asanas and pranayam that can actually help you? You know improve your uh, health of your face. Then mudras a complete practice that is most important. Like we can understand the asanas separately, pranayam and mudra separately, but that's uh, more on the science part. When, when it comes to the practical part, it is completely on the art, your style of doing it. You can't copy someone else's else style or maybe that will not work out for you. Partially that can work. But if you want a 100% solution for yourself, you should be crafting it by yourself. You should be you know, creating your own practice, your own style of doing it. That's completely art. That's not science. Science to learn, art to do. So, and then we'll definitely go for the Q&A where uh, I'll be inviting most of the questions. So, uh, moving next. So, first we need to understand, I mean, you know, let's understand what is face. Basically, the face yoga is one of the form of yoga. Why we are saying form of yoga? Because yoga is a completely holistic approach. It's not for face or for hand or for leg for anything. I mean, in ancient time, it was holistic approach. Now, as we have less time, and we want to address particular problems. We want to cure that or we want to improve that. That's why we have formed a kind of yoga called face yoga, which only deals with the facial muscles, facial bone, uh, the health of your face and skin. So now moving next, I mean, basically, if we go back in ancient time, the yogis and practitioners, if you look in the historical part of, you know, the yoga, you'll find the Guru Gorakshanath who who really worked very hard to, you know, discover the ways of being youth. I mean, you know, to concul to be, I mean, to maintain his youthfulness. See, he has been, that's why in general, we say like what you're doing, Gorak Dhanda. All these, you know, all these, I mean, unconventional practices when you do, it's people generally address it as a Gorak Dhanda. So Gorak Sanat was the person Okay, so basically, Gorakhsanath was one of the person and guru, yogi, who started exploring more into the yogic practices, which can actually make them see, I mean, you know, look like a youth, young person. He wanted to be young and he wanted to live longer. These two was major objective of his practice. That's why he started doing yoga. This is what basically the historical you know, stories tell about him. So he explored so many things, especially whatever the tough asanas or hatha yoga you see, the ex, you know, expansion of your hatha yoga is all done by him. So in hatha yoga, we we find the, you know, basically uh, we find the evidence of uh, practicing face yoga or maybe like, you know, how we can improve the health of our face. Then if you uh, basically understand your whole, your complete health, your face is reflecting your complete health. If you have issue at your kidney, liver, or stomach, or heart, or lungs, everything will be visual on your face. Okay, if pimples, the specific area on your face, 
if you get pimples or some you know problem then easily can detect like which part of your body is experiencing some trouble okay so like this is already i mean in if you look into the chinese medicine uh, you know their system ancient system similar like us they have been treating people based on their face i mean how face looks what is appearing on the face so they were detecting that was one of the way of analyzing their health okay this is also in india in indian system also we have been using this the technique look at the face and you can easily understand what are the problems person is facing in their health issues and all so that's why if you heal your face there's two way either heal your body or heal your face both the way it will be i mean if your your face is clean i mean you're looking perfect there is no problem on your face that means your health is completely i mean you have overcome most of challenges of your health so health challenges all you can overcome with you know working out on your face so i told you like do two different approach if we look from the yogic perspective okay now we're moving next basically the problems we should be understanding about like okay so uh, the problems we are trying to understand here is more on the and you know like basically dryness face fat uh, uh, face fat wrinkles pigment are, are dry a dark circle and acne and uh, pimples just a second so these are the major problems what about double chin sir that's that's covers in the face fat okay <laughs> yeah that's covers in the face fat. see basically these are the problems in general what happens you know these problems are not specific problems there are so many different factors for these problems okay we can definitely overcome but we have to understand there are few things i mean if i divide your routine in three parts morning midday and night then probably you can understand what are the uh, you know mistakes you are doing and you are getting all these problems so what are the cause of these problem you can easily detect so face fat basically what happens so face fat is also reflected because of like as your body is getting excess fat and now the blood circulation is not proper on your face then slowly you will start accumulating the fat on your face especially the double chin these are the problems start happening i mean dryness like dryness easily i mean you can easily understand like moisture in your body is not proper basically you're not able to maintain uh, you know you're not hydrated you're dehydrating faster even before your body experience it your face will start telling you that this become nature this become actually part of your daily routine like you're you're not properly being uh, maintaining your you know hydration so you're not hydrated i mean you need to work out on your routine so these are the easily these are the basic sign that you can easily understand body reflex later but face reflex immediate okay like you know if you have sleeplessness night for example telling you how easily you can understand like there is a trouble easily your face will tell you okay you will not look proper you will look like definitely if anyone can look at your face and can tell you oh you have not had good sleep right yeah. easily detectable yeah similarly the dryness whatever see here, whatever you are seeing here the face fat basically it's telling you that now your body is accumulating more fat you should be working out on your routine or do something to you know cut down on that if you have fat in your body that is that is a different thing that means maybe your body has that nature it's a natural fat you are accumulating for the some uh, you know emergency basically what happens we have some fat we store some fat for the emergency time for example because of some reason you did not got some food proper food now you are unknow i mean you know unwantedly unwantedly you are actually on fast can't have food you went somewhere then what will happen your body will be using those stored fat but the fat, once fat started appearing on your face that means it's not good for your body now your body started ex you know accumulating extra fat so that is the sign where you should be understanding oh now i should be doing something to cut down on the fat it's not the good fat the bad fat that's why my face is reflecting so face will reflect easily the problem now so wrinkles and pigmentation so wrinkles wrinkles basically basically if you look at the wrinkles part what happens it's saying it's actually telling you that you are aging faster then actually it should be happening okay if you started getting wrinkles means you are aging faster that means your cells you know the ratio of dying and regeneration of your cells is actually not balanced now 
once we become you know adult what happens both the you know cells getting i mean cells dying and cells generating regenerating will be balanced if it is disbalanced if the more cells are dying and less is i mean you're regenerating means you will start getting wrinkles okay that means you are aging faster now you should be doing something to you know do some anti aging part some anti aging practice okay in and out it's not only the face but it is also about your health your body your body is also aging faster the problem is in your lungs the problem in your body not absorbing enough oxygen your body need antioxidant to absorb more oxygen the moment your body will start absorbing more oxygen immediately you will see it will relax reflecting on your face your wrinkles will be going up okay i said both the side if you take care of your health your face will be reflecting that you are healthy face will be looking so beautiful and uh, clean and everything will be uh, proper there but if it is not then you should be actually um, it will be appearing there both sides so if even if you work out on your face part it will actually trigger the body to maintain its health okay now pigmentation is something like impurity in your blood you need to purify your blood that's appearing there dark circle sleeplessness stress you know your basically that your digestive system and nervous system they both are disturbed that's why dark circle is appearing on your face then acne and pimples they all are because of the impurities so if you look at your complete health one side and your face it's like your face is report of your health report card you got tested now it is appearing on your face if you look at your face easily you can understand okay so these are the things which we should be understanding these are the problems so problem is not on face the problem is health problem is on the health side we need to cover both the side the health side and the face side okay now and most important thing is you are breathing i mean how you get the oxygen you are thinking like when you breathe your lungs get absorb oxygen but your face is also absorbing oxygen so easiest access easiest way of supplying your brain oxygen is your face if it is clean proper if you are maintaining the hygiene and all your brain will be happy okay because your face will absorb it and supply it immediately to your brain it is very close close to the brain part okay so see when your hand absorb the oxygen it supply to the internal part of the muscles and all to keep it healthy and keep moving but when your face and face your facial muscles this increase the blood circulation in your head fat basically that also helps your brain okay now moving to the next basically here now the most important thing in the uh, you know face yoga is one we have understood the problem the other side but now we need to understand so like you know when we say beautiful face there are four factors that generally actually keep your you know keep you naturally beautiful one is the glow that is important definitely the glow is there which actually help you you know to keep you shining and it's actually i mean you look better now freshness second thing like even the glow is there but you are not you know keeping your face fresh then what will how it will look like will look like the good painting with you know and there are dust over it so then third one is happiness happiness easily you can see even there is a wrinkle i mean even you can overcome your wrinkle part and the other problems the health problems if you are happy so happiness you should be maintaining to keep your face healthy and beautiful and then last is the good shape why i'm keeping it last because top 3 you can easily maintain the last you need to work out on that majorly in face yoga part you will find you will be i mean most of time you will see like only we will be working on the good shape part I mean how we can maintain the shape like jaw line your facial structure basically you know i mean the fineness tightness on the skin and all but this is the last that you can practice and you can attain i mean you know you can actually do it you can get it but the top 3 which is should with that should be in your routine okay and you know basically this is all what i'm talking right now is the part of the routine it's not like one one month you do and it will appear and you will get it no you should be finding the way of you know incorporating in this in your routine daily routine okay now as i told you we are now getting more into the last point because the top 3 you do understand properly it's easy to understand the last one we have to understand in deeply okay good same so now this is called the golden ratio okay this is very famous how many of you know about it golden ratio 
If yes, thumbs up. If no, that's okay. We'll explain. Okay. So golden ratio is the, I mean, basically this, this is very ancient technique and I mean, you know, uh, kind of a formula you can call it. So basically they have been using this to make key, you know, I mean, basically design or craft the beautiful pictures. And also this is seen, this is basically a, a kind of, you know, a natural law. You will find anything which is beautiful in nature. You will find they all will be following this formula. It's called golden ratio. So golden ratio is the ratio of length and breadth should be 1.6. If it is like that, the things will be looking appearing beautiful. Okay. Now, how we can actually understand on, your, on our face? Look at the left side and the right side. The ratio. Basically, this is how it works. Right side is not looking uh, proper, right? It seems ugly, not beautiful. Left side looking beautiful. This is why, because the left part, you see the left side of the face, which is following the golden ratio. The right side is not following the golden ratio. Even nowadays, I told you, right? So initially only, like we'll be, we'll be definitely talking about the medical perspective and the yogic perspective both at the same time. Now, so medical perspective, whenever they do the surgery, what they do, they measurement, they take the measurement and they try to fit in the golden ratio part. Okay, so let's say if the right side person goes to a, a you know a doctor for the surgery, plastic surgery, and want to get a good uh, you know I mean basically face, what will happen? The doctor will take the measurement and then will try to fit in the this left side part. In general, I mean I know this is very complex case right now because the right and left is not so close, but in general I'm telling you this is what happens. Okay, now see. If you have to understand, basically, when you try to practice, when you try to do face yoga, what you should be doing, basically, you have also need to adjust your facial features and structure in the same way, so that if you come close to this golden ratio part, what will happen? Whatever I mean, your face will start look, it will start looking more beautifully. I mean, it's like you you are doing beautification of your face. That is the natural state. What I said, the golden ratio is the natural law your face, your body should also be following that. But then you need to put some effort to fit yourself in the golden ratio part. So how you'll do? First, you need to understand your face. So there's two ways. Horizontally, you should be dividing it one fifth of, you know, you can see, right, the left side. So they are one fifth, one fifth, one fifth portion. So basically, once you look at your face and you divide like this, and then the horizontal, you see one third, one third, one third. This way you can easily understand and you can fit, you can work out on your face part, like nose, eyes, eyebrows, ear, okay, chin, all this you can easily understand and then you can work out. All these practices, what we are going to do today, the exercises, the yoga, yogic practices on our face, this is all for, I mean, fitting your facial features in this segment, uh, you know, basically in this seg uh, sections. So that's why you should not be doing more. Let's say if we have learned to work on our nose. You started working. Now you have, you know, you have actually, you know, increase the length basically. And now you are keep increasing. If it is going out of this line, what will happen? Again, you came, I mean, before it was not fitting in that. Now also it will not be fitting in that. So you should not be doing more or less. You should be doing proper as how much it is required or needed. Now, what you should do then, take a picture, print it out on A4 size and do this measurement. Figure it out, like where you need to work out. Should not be working on all the facial part. If something which is already fitting in that ratio, then why you are working there? Again, you are going to distort it. Then again, you're changing the shape. No, only work out where it is required to change the shape, basically to improve the shape. To improve the shape only do the improvement where is required should not be doing on all the part of your face okay because i mean if you look at if you look at in yourself this is for everyone you'll find only 20 to 30 percent you need to do remaining 70 to 80 percent is already done by nature okay and what is not done by nature is only because of our bad i mean you know our not proper care and all this actually we have only disordered it not the nature. Nature wanted to keep it in shape, but we have disordered it. So whatever we did mistake, we need to just correct it. For that, take out the picture, 
figure it out where you should be working and then do only that practice then you will find you need not to invest, i mean spend much time on the face yoga part in spending less you will be getting the exact result what you are looking for so this you should be doing the next moving to the daily routine so the same part is done okay so if you have any questions you can keep your questions or you can comment we'll definitely take it in the q and a regarding the face part, uh, safe part face or safe. now this is basic i do understand you all know about it but i'm this is kind of more remind reminder for you divide your whole routine in three parts morning midday and night okay so morning cleanness okay how when you are, i'm saying like cleanness should be gentle generally what happens when we go for the cleanness we start treating our face like you know um, like some crockery we are rubbing it so hardly don't treat it like that okay treat it like a baby face okay so skin softly gently you should be doing it if you rub it hardly what happens the softness will go away and then you will be experience uh, you will be you know expecting like there should be some softness and should appear and glow glow will only be there when there is softness if there is no softness no glow okay right hard surface if you paint even if you paint the hard surface what happens will it be glowing no when it is a smooth surface even you are not painting it will be glowing right even you are not doing anything you are not putting any moisturizer or anything it will be glowing okay so keep it soft first use soft towels in general do not rub it you know soak it it should be like i mean you are putting the paper and just removing it you soak it so this habit once will start glow you know developing this habit there will be natural glow up start will start appearing on your face naturally okay it's a nature basically understand like our main effort is not to do something our main effort to cut down all the mistakes we should be not doing those mistakes let the nature work out on your face not you should you just cut down all your mistakes and whatever which preventing your i mean preventing nature to keep the glow on your face okay so those practices we have to here we have to learn what we should not be doing more than what should be doing okay because most nature is already doing so many things okay now next is aloe vera i mean we all understand about aloe vera right you do understand aloe vera it's like herbal aloe vera is i mean so like you know it's aloe vera is really really very good thing i mean sometime what happens it's also depends on our face i mean you know skin nature of our skin but i think this is something which is universal which suits everyone so in morning if you after you know washing your face clean maintaining the cleanness and hygiene if you apply little bit layer of aloe vera what happens for some time half an hour or one hour and then if you clean it out it's gently gives the natural you know glow to your face it's also take out most of the intact uh, toxins from your face so this is a good practice it's not necessary to do it every day but aloe vera part you can i mean you know on the basis i mean on demand basically basically like uh, you try it three days two days five days and figure it out like how it is working if two days is enough do for only the twice in a week or thrice in a week or if five days required do it for five days okay drink drink enough water in morning because midday you may miss but morning and evening if you, or night if you maintain it it will be good so morning the moment you, you are going to start your day should be have your body should be experiencing enough water and then do the pranayam and face yoga face yoga will be talking definitely next and pranayam is most important because i'll tell you what the pranayam why it is important but this is the routine part the midday you see like wash your face again do the same thing but only here i'm not talking about some of you know i mean face wash or something why because like i i mean you can easily do use your fingertip okay to wash it you know rub it slowly gently and then keep laughing and smiling that's give you really a good health to your face vitamin c intake should be there maintain somehow manage it like maybe lemon or whatever suits you as per your diet as per your nature of your body because that you should be first thinking in that manage the stress stress is one of i mean stress kills your glow it kills the face health so man manage your stress night besan is the best natural scrubber 
for your face, whatever appeared and got the you know impurities and dust and whatever there on your face, you can easily you know clean it out. So basin is the natural, you know, basically you know that scrubber. You can use it. You can rub on your face a little bit and you can wash it. Take deep sleep and especially like your pillow and your bed sheet, which is coming just close. I mean your face is coming directly in contact with that. That should be clean. If you can't, I mean, you can't manage it, you know, for long. So what you can do basically, for example, if you went somewhere, you can use your same, uh, you know, uh, towel, which you are specially yeah. using for your face. Keep your towel, only one towel, specially for your face, not for your body. So you can keep that on your pillow and then you can sleep. So even though if you're turning left or right, your face will not be getting direct contact with the pillow and all. Okay, so you can, that way you can manage now, see, uh, these are the problems in general we have discussed, like how it looks on your face. If you see a skin, I mean, you know, basically the damaged screen. If you look at your face and if you see some kind of, you know, cracks in your face, it's that means like your face, your skin is getting damaged. Okay, then uh, improve your acne. Basically, this is how yoga can actually help all this. Reduce wrinkle, reduce redness, you know, I mean, dark circle and all. Now, this is important, face yoga, okay. Now we're understanding what we should be doing on, in the face yoga part, okay. So look at this, the center of this picture, okay. So these are the muscles and the sign you see, the arrow you see, this is the movement where you should be moving. So the forehead part should be moving up and side, not inward, should be outward from center to out, left and right, and then upward, first thing. Second is your, you know, I mean, basically eyelids should be moving out and then the, uh, you know, bottom wall apart should be moving in, just below your eye, okay. should be moving in. Once you're moving in, then you'll be reaching to the top area of your nose. From there, you should be again moving it up, like nostril, nose wall, nose wall apart. Okay. Then from the bottom of your side of, uh, you know, part of your nose, it should be moving Towards ear. Okay. So if you are getting it, if you have any doubts, you can let me know. So this is the actual practice. Nothing more than this. And then about neck, you can also see like, right? So moving it upward, the chin wall apart. After this, I'll show you where you're coming to the chin center and then you're moving your thumb inward like this. Okay. Towards your ear to get the jawline. Okay. To work out on your double, double chin like this. So this is seven practices you see here, right? After, uh, you know, after this workshop, basically, I will definitely send this PPT to you guys, you can easily get this practice. So um, after presenting, so we should be moving next. If you want to take the picture or screenshot, you can take. Okay. So this is the actual practice of face yoga. Just after getting fresh, you can practice this gently. The only thing is you should be using your fingers and thumbs and moving on your face. Also, it should be gentle. Should not be pressing it and then pulling it. Okay. It's not like you're tearing something. It is like you're just giving a gentle move on your face, on your skin. Now, coming on the asanas part. Okay. These are the asanas which actually improve your face, you know, health of your face. Sarvanga asana, which actually helps you to get circular. I mean, you, it, it improves the blood circulation towards your face, especially in your brain and face. Then if the blood circulation is there, more blood circulation is there, what happens? In generally, you, your body, your face and your head experience more oxygen. Then generally, if you get, if your oxygen reaching there means it is going to help you. It is improving the health of. Then mountain pose is also there. This one is mountain pose, which also helps you to improve. Because see, like whatever asana you see here, it's all improving the blood circulation towards the face. In general, if you try to understand. So these asanas, if I say like four asanas, these four asanas are enough for you. How long should we be practicing? 30 seconds. Okay. 30 seconds is enough. Holding one asana for 30 seconds is enough to improve the uh, health of your face. 
three pranayams one nadi sodhan to basically purify your blood kapalbhati to improve increase the glow on your face and pranakarsan pranayam is to increase the oxygen in your facial area okay so basically in your brain and your face these three pranayam can improve one can purify second can increase the glow and third one can improve the oxygen level basically okay in your facial area on your brain so these three pranayams are there nadi sodhan pranayam which is how we practice it we inhale and exhale from one nostril left nostril for seven times then right nostril for seven times so then one time from both the nostril and when release from mouth we don't exhale we release we let the air come out from the mouth so when you will start doing it what will happen initially you will feel more warm air will be coming out of your mouth then slowly once the temperature of your i mean you know the exhalation is getting get, getting you know once it is getting cooled down that means you are done with the practice nadi sodhan then you don't need to continue you should be stopping that until you're getting warm air you should be practicing once it is get temperature is getting down or if it is getting you know slowly cooling then you should be stopping it that means the nadi sodhan is done your body not need more than that nadi sodhan pranayam kapalbhati you do understand actively actively exhalation passively inhalation but again this is most important to understand if there is bp or uh, heart related any issue you should not be practicing kapalbhati pranayam nadi sodhan is okay to practice pranakarsan pranayam is also okay to practice nadi sodhan uh, i mean kapalbhati there is a restriction bp related issue or heart related issue or even the lungs related issue is there then you should not be practicing you should be practicing the only two first and last third one is not recommended if you are healthy it's everything is okay and then you can practice kapalbhati but also 60 counts is enough in one go then you should inhale and hold exhale and hold for the kapalbhati pranayam so these are three pranayams which is enough three minute is pranayam you can practice that is total nine minute that is maximum you can practice or in one one minute also you can practice for these pranayams in in beginning so that is enough so that will basically improve your health internally and also improve and glow uh, on on your face it will improve the glow on your face now there are some mudras which are really effective for the face yoga first kaki mudra where you are inhaling and holding the air in your mouth where your both the cheek is actually seems like a balloon and then you are releasing forcefully like this so inhaling filling the air in your mouth then you're keeping a narrow passage on your lip and then forcing the air out this is called kaki mudra so sitting in vajrasana and then doing this is the best practice do it three times or four times that is maximum then apan mudra which is more on taking all the toxins out from your body joining your middle finger and the ring finger with your Thumb, the tip of your middle finger and ring finger, or and or you can say it like making a U sign. <laughs> so that is a pan mudra. Okay, Prithvi mudra is more on uh, to you know balance the weight of your body, especially the fat of your body. That you're right now. I mean, like as you were asking now about the chin, double chin. So this is the mudra which can actually help to cut down that. Basically, not cut down to maintain or manage. if the body nature became to accumulate the fat this prithvi mudra will stop that it will transform your body it's not then again to release to you know cut down on the fat part you need to practice there are some other practice but to stop that nature to transform your body so that the nature the patterns body should not be following the same pattern of accumulating the fat the mudra will help you there okay then second is varun mudra which that to keep your body hydrated and then brahma mudra brahma mudra is to just improve the glow on your face okay so what you should do thumb in close your fingers join your both the hand and keep it in your lap it's like this mudra and then sankhmukhi mudra which is nothing more it is just to you know press those points which is just on the same line of your nostril okay so first finger should be on your eyes then second and then third which is the last finger will be coming on your just below your nostril okay like this this is called uh, sankhmukhi mudra in generally what happens 
when we whenever we do brahmri pranayam we use sankh mudra sankh mukhi mudra where we block our ear and keep the fingers on the face and then we make the sound of om with the closed mouth so you can even practice that pranayam along with the mudra okay so these are the six but for you one or two will is enough but you again need to figure it out where you are more comfortable if you are doing only mastering one or two will be enough for you to improve uh, your skin health now the last point where you should be crafting your own style as i told you in the beginning itself like whatever i'm explaining right now it's all science but when it comes to the practice it's completely mm -hmm. art need not to practice everything for you as i told you right you need to figure out like what you should be doing how much you need to do it okay so you guys can think of uh, whatever you really want to practice like if you look at this part i'm giving you one minute practice this same okay so how you should be practicing first start from the forehead part okay exactly follow the sign what you see here so i'll be coming in 15 second you keep practicing sudham so one second So how the practice is going? Going good. Yeah. So now, so how much pressure you should be maintaining? First thing, should also understand about this. You should be, you know, first you need to figure it out. Like how much you really need to put the pressure. Okay. When you put your fingers on your skin, first thing you should be experiencing the touch where it is happening. Okay. So use three fingers, index, mid, and ring fingers. Only these three fingers. Keep your thumb and your little finger free okay keep it on your forehead complete exactly at the center okay then keep your thumb side by side and then start pulling it outside slowly gently initially keep it as light as possible okay as light as possible you will be experiencing the screen uh, sorry basically the skin you will be experiencing it is getting pull you are actually pulling it outward but still you are not experiencing some tension over the skin right make sure like you're not putting the tension you're not pressing it down and then pulling it you're not stretching it you're just gently you know giving a basically you're moving it outside so what happens slowly when you'll keep doing like this the skin will experience that will become pattern for it so basically the skin always keep itself tight here okay it will be tight here because you're doing gently it will become natural but when you'll start pulling it like this what will happen the skin will get pulled then the moment you will release again you will see it is like you know making some lines here on the face so that's what the problem when we practice we have to understand how much pressure you should be putting here how much it's depend person to person if your skin is more hard then you should be putting more pressure if it is soft should be putting light you should be keeping it light less pressure okay or you can say no pressure just keep doing it slowly your skin will learn it so right now it's 
more than practice, you're teaching yourself, your skin, okay, how it should be there. Okay. So treat it like a small baby. Treat your skin like a small baby. You're teaching it, but gently. You're not being hard on that. Okay. Then second, on the eye part, this eyelid. Just only one finger. The index finger, bring it at the corner of your eyes and then move it over it. Slowly, gently. Like this. So again, it should be gentle. Believe me, if you're going hard on that, you'll not get the result. Or even you will get the side effect, but not result. But if you're make it, making it gentle, even very gentle, very light, even you will not experience like you did it. But it will start happening. Slowly it will start happening. The nature is very, I mean, you know, sensitive. So we should be treating nature very sensitively. So treat your face also very sensitively, very slow and just like a gentle touch. You're just treating, you're just training your skin. The cells is getting trained. When you'll, it will be experiencing a gentle pressure, it all will be, you know, memorizing it. So your, sin, your cells are also memorizing it. So whatever the next cells will come, the learnings will be passed to that. Then they will be adjusting themselves only. Okay. That way they'll be adjusting themselves. Now, second, below the ear, uh, eyes, see, from the corner, out corner, from the corner, you're moving inward and bringing it close to the nose, like this, slowly, gently. So what will happen? That way, the side wall apart, where you generally get the wrinkles here, okay, this lines, it will be disappearing. So gently bring it in, okay. Then come to the mid of your nostril, Use the these two fingers and then slowly pull it outside. Slowly pull it outside. Slowly pull it outside. Okay. Like that. Then come to the lip part. Both the corner, upper. And then slowly move it up. So when you're moving it up, what happens? Should not be pressing like this. Should be going out. Whenever you're doing this practice, always keep in your mind anything which is you're doing, which is not ending on the face. It's going out going closely or side by side of your face okay so if you're moving your fingers it is going out basically you're giving a space there so that it will be getting outside of your face okay the back side of your you know face basically like that whatever you're doing here so now we'll think about like when you're moving finger you know below your eyes inward what happens here so basically you're bringing it in and giving it more to the nose so when we'll be moving your fingers over the nose, what will happen? This portion, especially this portion will get more exposure. This will get more space to expand and it will come in the shape like this. Then this lip ball apart. So you're slowly moving it in, slowly moving it in, bringing it to the nose. Okay. And then you're starting from your chin. As I said, from chin, you're moving it upward. Where again to the ear. Okay, you're you're bringing it to the ear, ending it to the ear, the lower part of your ear, the lobe, ear lobe. Okay, like that. Bring it, move it there, and then now use your thumb, keep it below your chin, especially at the center, and then start pressing it inward. Here you can put the pressure, not over. Leave it. Only thumb below. And then you're getting some skin here. You're just moving it upward towards the ear. Simple. Like this. So if you if you keep pressing like this, what will happen? This chin part which will start coming out, basically. And this will slowly keep your jawline also clear. So you don't need to move your hand over the jawline. You just need to pull the extra skin which is coming down Move it upward towards your ear. Basically, that will create the jaw. Then last from this, all this is moving your, you know, especially opening your jaw and closing it like this. So in general, what happens when you forcefully close it? This will start coming out. So make sure it's not coming out. So what you are doing, you are gently opening it, but releasing it, not closing it. You're letting it close automatically.
gently. So keep your hands, keep your fingers here, side by side. Now open. The moment you feel like it is coming out, stop there only. Do not open more than that. Move your jaw a little bit left and right, not too much, a little bit left and right. Yes, there only. Open your mouth, move it left and right. Relax. So these are the basics. So left and right movement, left and right, it's adjusting your jaw, adjusting your basically, you know, these part there only. Now, the last one is feel air in your mouth and hold it. Then move it around to the left, top, right, top, bottom, then down, this part, this part, all, all over the mouth, wherever the space are there. But gently, keep moving one by one. All this. And then reverse. And then how you'll release it? You'll open a very narrow passage and you'll forcefully throw it out. The moment you're throwing the air, the moment you're releasing the air out, forcing the air out, what you're doing, you're pulling this cheek in. Okay? So all the air out and then pull it in. Then last one, start taking breath from mouth only. Pulling it forcefully. Then release. Keep very narrow passage and pull it. Uh, Sugam, one question. Yes. आप जैसे पुल कर रहे हो अभी तो पुल करके उसको अंदर थोड़ी देर रख के फिर नो से एक्स ने एक्सेल करना है या माउथ मेक इट फ्रीक्वेंट मैं इनहेल हाँ नॉस्टल से बाहर जाने दीजिए अच्छा बस मतलब लेकिन वो इस यू हैव टू जस्ट टेक इट वेरी स्लोली छोटे मुंह से अंदर लेना है राइट या इट शुड बी वेरी नैरो you're okay. pulling it, but there is more pressure. So basically, it's like hard pull. So when you're Achy. pulling it hardly, what happens? Your skin hai, jo generally kya hota hai, some of inside you will see some of the part of your chick inside, there will be some more, you know, it, you feel like there is more uh, fat or more muscles, more okay. skin and less screen. Less okay. skin. So it's like not uniformly distributed all over the face. Okay. When okay. you're pulling it with force, what happens? It will start distributing it. It will start. I mean, basically, your face will experience the need of distributing it properly throughout the face. Okay. Oh, That's okay, right. okay. Second one, when you're pulling it in, what happens? Whatever you did, it should you should be doing this at the end. Whatever you did will be getting stabilized on your face. Okay, so this is to be done at the last. At the last, it this is like Santi part. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, so on the face yoga part, this is, I mean, this is what you need to do on the face part. But again, I'm coming back. Everything you need not to practice. If your chick is already okay, should not be practicing. You don't need to pull it here. Leave it because the nature is already, I mean, your body is already maintaining it. Again, you're doing extra effort there. Maybe it, you will disorder it. Okay. So what you should be doing, you should be only focusing on the particular feature and the spatial particular part of your face that you need to improve. Let's say the eyes. If you need to only improve the eye wala part, just keep doing that only. And also it should be limited. Never do too much. Ati Sarvart Varjate. This is not me. I said, where do we satisfy? We feel good, 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 we feel good. Yeah, I mean, I do understand because like we have, I mean, we need to keep patience. We think like ek din mein, do din mein, we'll cover all this. Not possible. It's just, I mean, this is more, see, even you can cover in one or two days. But what I'm telling you, then it will become more effort on the maintenance part. When you want it to be natural without extra effort, you have to develop it as a routine and not it as a routine, but it should be natural. It should be part of your face, your body itself. It should be automated. 
कितनी बार सो नॉट बी ऑलवेज पुटिंग योर फेस एंड आई मीन हैंड्स एंड पुटिंग एंड डूइंग दैट सेम थिंग Just train your skin. That's why I'm saying gentle. Train your skin. Live it. Like when you send your kids to school, what happens? They don't keep it them twenty four into seven, right? There is a schedule. There is a routine. They follow it so that your kid will get in routine. Automatic it. Now it become automated for them. They know the time is for study. They'll keep studying. They know the exams are coming. They'll be preparing for that. Similarly, you have to train your body. You're doing for five minute and leaving it. After some point of time, what will happen? The body itself will learn. So now it became part of the body. Body itself will be doing it internally. It will be pulling the skin and maintaining that. Okay. Now moving to the next part. That asana we have already uh, discussed. Pranayam we have discussed. Mudra we have discussed. Now I said craft. Then you need to figure it out. What you need to do exactly, and then do that only. The last I told you this breathing in, inhaling and pulling air in, and then releasing it from now uh, nostril is like Santi Pat means that that is how you should be ending. Now, if you have any questions, we can definitely discuss that. Yeah, uh, so for doing uh, facial yoga, do we need to apply oil to the skin so the fingers can flow easily, or we can? Do it directly uh, on the dry skin. Right. Very good question. See, <clears throat> this depends basically. Uh, first thing is to keep it gentle. You should be moving it gently with your fingers. Okay. What happens now? Applying oil is all not necessary. It's like optional. If you want, you can keep it. If you don't want, you don't need to do it. Okay? It's optional. Whatever you're putting from outside, just optional. Even you can do this way. Like you can gently move your fingers and let your skin. learn this second if it is dry skin okay uh, first start hydrating yourself second thing is like maintain i mean um, use milk cream okay in night if it is dry skin okay if it is dry skin so what you should be doing very less amount start with the lesser and try to learn i mean basically you need to figure it out like what is suitable for you what happens suggestions are good i mean i said right like, science and art art is where you need to figure it out what will be working well i mean will be working for you but these are basically for short term short time and short term it is okay but to develop a routine it's not good practice to always apply some oils or something for the smooth you know movement even you can keep your i mean i told you right so start gentle movement gently start moving it you need not to press it hard so i i would say oil you can definitely use but it's optional It's not necessary. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And also, uh, among the face yoga you showed, uh, which one would you suggest to increase buccal fat? Hmm. Okay, so coming back that. So you remember, right? What I'm telling you is, you can start doing all this, but gently figure it out what real you need to do. okay start with all but focus on particular for example if you need to improve the neck part okay only gently do that if you need to improve the chin wala part only do that right yeah i i have very prominent cheek bones so i thought uh, increasing a bit of buccal fat will make uh, the face more rounder okay so see yeah that's what i'm saying so saying in the sense like this is not to cut down uh, you know the fat or the muscles or whatever you have on your face this is to heal it improve it if it is very less it will fill that part if it you have more it will cut down on that that's why gentle it will manage it will basically manage itself only right so what you are doing you are increasing the blood circulation there so whatever your body need make it gent- uh, natural so that bo- your body will start you know managing maintaining it by itself okay okay thank you so gentle movement do the gentle movement slowly it will start appearing there it will start filling all those area and it will not be too much also okay yeah. must do these asanas 
these are also important you can we cannot cut down on that see one more thing just note this is not only important okay this is to focus this is to train your face but this is also important you have trained but you're not supplying nutrition and vitamins to the you know trainees what will happen they'll learn but they will not do this is going to take care of that okay so let your body also experience more ex oxygen to your face more blood circulation to your face whatever is required i, I have all spoken already about the routine and also on this whole presentation nothing is more important or less important everything is equally important but should be understanding what you really need to do what you don't need to do already doing or somehow it is already managed okay. that's what i'm saying right so asanas I mean, even one, two asanas are also enough, but these are the four asanas options for you that to improve the blood circulation on your face. Sarvanga asana, mountain pose, halasana, and then sasanga asana. Whatever you want, you can actually practice. Pranayama said, you can even choose one, but if you're keeping all these three combinations, will be good for you initially, but you can choose one also. Mastering one will also be helping you. So all these three will definitely help you to glow, increase the glow on your face. But if you're starting with one, you will be easily, you know, getting the benefits. And about this, I said, one mudra is also enough. But if you want to practice all this and figure out what will be suitable for you, then you definitely should practice. But one will be enough. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, so the one more. Can you just take it back one more time on mudras? Yeah, I can you ex uh, explain the Brahma mudra? I'm sorry, I forgot. Apan and Brahma. Okay. So apan basically, apan is more on, it is more working on the extractory part of your body, extractory system of your body, taking all the toxins out. Okay. So okay. nature of, see, basically apan mudra related to the apan vayu, the pran vayu, which is one of the part of pran vayu is called apan vayu. So apan, major apan uh, functionality is take all the impurities and toxins out of the body. So when you practice it, it actually keeps your body clean. Mm -hmm. Okay. When it is it. getting purified, it, it, it is getting clean, it will be reflecting on your face. Okay. See, if you if you have if you did something which actually help you to purify your blood, the glow immediately will be increasing on your face automatically. Mm -hmm. yeah. And last Brahma Mudra. Brahma Mudra, yes. So Brahma Mudra is like thumb in and finger. Hold your finger and keep it touching your both hands like this and keeping in your lap. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, right. So Brahma Mudra is also basically Brahma Mudra we use to improve the spiritual part of our, you know, I mean ourself. So oh, okay. where you are more content, less stressed, oh. and more content, less stress, and that means and also it's improving the mental well-being. Basically, that way you are also improving your face. And glue and all this, right? Okay, thank you so much, Subhi. Thanks. So I think you guys will definitely craft it by yourself. Will it be okay? If you need any help, definitely you can ask me. You can even drop a message or email. Uh, will help you out. But yeah, I mean, this is most important for you. Whatever I have presented, I mean, this is less important for me. Me more important for you. So here I can't. <laughs> give you any you know uh, basically i can't tell you anything more about it this is completely on your side so whatever you got now the knowledge and the practice and all figure it out sort it out as per your need craft it whatever you need to include include whatever you need to remove you re should remove question we are already discussing any other question if you have let me know So I think no questions now. So, okay. So we have already, I mean, completed basically the whole, I mean, how we, I mean, we have understood the face yoga part. So as I have discussed about the first part of the face yoga, where I was telling you about the Guru Gorakshanath, right? Is a yogi, ancient yogi who, who was mad to keep himself youth. I mean, you know, entire life. And he did all this Gorakhanda. To figure it out how he can be young till his you know life so what he figured it out he figured it out many things out of that he said like the first thing is controlling your mind 
Okay, what happens before your body feel the aging, your mind start feeling the aging. So to work out on the age, anti-aging part and see like when I say anti-aging, the first appearance of anti-aging will be on your face. Once your face started appearing like young, and if you see your face is reflecting it like youthfulness, then your body will be getting, I mean, you know, experiencing the same thing. So he said like mentally you should be young first. Okay. If you're working out on your face, if you're not happy and not laughing and not smiling, you can't keep it on your face, right? You worked out, you did all this, but it will not stay there. So keep smiling. It's more important thing. The moment you started smiling, there is a pressure, there is a pull which actually supplying more oxygen and blood circulation to your face. Most of the part of your face muscles is engaged already there. Even though you're doing very gentle, a small practice, less practice on your face, it will be lasting for longer. So keep smiling, the most important thing. And keep mentally feel it, whatever you're doing. Okay, Mentally engage with that. And you're moving your fingers where you're, where what you're thinking that time. Are you experiencing it, getting more engaged with the movement? Yes, that will be working with you. Okay. Second, about the food. He said like food is also important. How this would be? Too much of food is all. Too much of food. If you are having too much of food, too much spicy and all, it will be definitely cutting down on your glow part. So if you want to keep it, if you want a glowing face, so cut down on most of the spices. It should not be more spicy. It should be balanced. I'm not saying no spice. Spice is also medicine. It should be balanced. Okay. How much you need. Your body will be telling you more on that. Second thing, cutting down on the sugar and salt is easily and lukewarm water. These are the most important ingredient of your food intake that actually keeps your uh, basically, you know, digestive system healthy. That will definitely improve your glow on your face. Okay. And then last, he said about the discipline. So I already discussed about that. Morning, midday and evening. Cleanness, hygiene, hygiene is one thing. But again, including the yogic practice, the pranayam, the mudras we have already discussed, this is also the part of the routine. So morning, midday and evening. Okay. Keep having vitamin C, which is easy to maintain, you know, health of your skin. So these are the major part of uh, face yoga practice. And one more thing we have specifically understood about this. Now one bonus tip. So bonus tips is you see your ear, right? So low of your ear. If you work out on your ear part, see like this, so this part, if you have piercing, make sure like you're not holding on the piercing side by side of this. Okay. And keep pulling it slowly down side, keep pulling it slowly, gently. Okay. It will definitely improve the health of your face, of your brain. Okay. So this way you can improve it slowly out and then up. Okay. Then keep your finger here and keep pressing this cap inside like this then outside of your ear so this is the easiest way of increasing the blood circulation on your face okay. ear your ear is the easiest way you can work out on your ear and it will help you like this but make sure the piercing and all you should be um, you know it should not be actually uh, putting tear I mean you know basically pulling it harder should be doing it gently and make sure like you're not harming yourself there okay so doing this will definitely help you out there okay so now you can actually share if we are done with the questions now you can share your experience how was this thank you Sugam for such a lovely curated presentation for us lot to learn a lot of things actually lot of myths were there which got removed today so really happy very thankful to you thank you yeah please share share your experience yeah it was a lovely class uh, thank you for taking your precious time and teaching us thank you so much my pleasure. Yeah, let us unmute yourself. Yeah, this should be accompanied by the asanas also, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that is the challenging part. I mean, there are some options. I mean, I kept 
see all these asanas you have seen right there are four asanas i give you option one is sasanka asana which is the easiest one correct yeah yeah easily you can practice that that will definitely improve the gut health of your gut health of your heart health of your face health of your neck all this in one asana only sasanka asana yeah that's only sasanka asana if you do just mastery over sasanka asana you can't imagine how many benefits you can get in just by doing only sasanka asana okay yeah it's improved the gut health also mm -hmm. yeah. so face yeah. yoga should be done after the asanas uh no 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 it's not after the asana it just as per your comfort i mean you can do it before you can do it later on i said craft it so whenever you have time even in midday also you can practice for example if you are somewhere where you have nothing to do but you need to wait you can do it so you yeah. can utilize your time there uh. okay right Yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much for this session. I think um, one thing I wanted to highlight uh, basically is uh, you focus most on the fundamental part. Uh, for example, the very basic thing to keep face clean so that more oxygen gets in. I, I think it is a very fundamental thing that everyone should know, which we yes. all do. Yeah, that these kind of fundamentals help us uh, really get the concepts very well. Thank you so much for this. Yeah. thank you my pleasure yeah fundamentals are really very important when thank any you. in any subject and if you know fundamental i do believe uh, this is my ex personal experience also one who really understand and learn the fundamental they never leave it i mean in general we say no we are on and off you will never go off on the <laughs> practice you will be always on learning fundamental the only problem with the learning fundamental is two way one the interest of learning fundamental the other like how we are presenting the fundamental sometimes we always try to skip it because we want to exaggerate the more practical part like showing you more advanced asanas and all but to achieve that we need strong fundamentals so that way if we learn it well i believe like it's become very easy to incorporate in our daily routine especially in our practices yeah and to get the result i mean it will be easy to get result faster So, thank you uh, this session even in in our daily sessions also like uh, certain asanas you tell us like where exactly the focus has to be where exactly you need to strengthen your uh, things and all so those fundamentals generally miss in some other yoga classes that i have seen specifically so which is really good from your side it gives us a lot of confidence that we can also try it out <laughs> yeah. it doesn't scare us very much thank you yeah yeah that's really important i my my when i mean see my main uh, you know basically you can say the strength of my training is this only i focus more on the fundamental because my personal experience i mean when i learned i have explored many you know different uh, way of learning and training and i have experienced a lot but what i have found one thing is you know, one practitioner should not be going off the practice i mean like should not be stopping it somehow some way should be doing it but should be more inside it should be more personal i said like art of doing it that's why why i more focus on the fundamentals and learning it because once you learn once you understand it then you don't need to get any push from outside right i mean you enjoy it you learn and basically you will be more exploring it discovery part will be there similarly with this face yoga also i try to keep those fundamentals so when you start doing it you will be knowing better like how much you should be putting the pressure how much you should be pulling and what you should be doing i do i really need to work on my forehead part for me if if you are, if i'm asking myself i said no where i should be doing more should be doing more on this part definitely i need to improve this part then do i really need to work out on my chin part no definitely not it is already there naturally if it is naturally there then why i'm going to disturb disorder i mean why i'm going to disturb it let it happen naturally whenever it will appear i'll start working on i'll start training it so training is more important then it will become effortless practice so i mean we are in yoga we need to keep things effortless not effortful so as we are learning and getting more experience should be happening automatically more so that i should be putting less effort and enjoying more so yeah definitely that so uh we'll wrap up here okay thank you everyone yeah so we'll share the presentation as well as we'll say, try to share the recording part also with you guys for the later reference enjoy and keep smiling this most important thing be happy
face will be glowing definitely and keep practicing yeah. wherever you need. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sadam. Thanks a lot. Thank Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.